Hello viewers, welcome back to the lab. This is part three of the Quantel Paintbox DPB restoration series that I uh, started a, f a couple of weeks ago. Uh, if you've not seen the first two episodes, they will be in the video description or up on a little card somewhere. You better catch up um, if you haven't seen them. So uh, thankfully there has been some progress. Um, it's slow, but definite progress. And always I want to thank uh, my viewers, my loyal patrons, uh, and my channel sponsor, PCBWay, uh, for helping uh, restore this wonderful machine. Thank you everybody for your awesome support. This episode of Dexis Tech Lab is sponsored by PCBWay, a full featured PCB and rapid prototyping service. I've used PCBWay myself, so I know they offer great service and quality with plenty of advanced options for standard flex and flex rigid PCBs. PCBWay also now offer a rapid prototyping service for CNC machining, sheet metal work, 3D printing, and even injection molding. If you want to see more of what PCBWay have to offer, go and visit the links in the video description. Okay, so you may remember from uh, part two that uh, I managed to uh, have these powered up um, and I managed to get the computer one card talking to the EEPROM, the memory banks on the computer two, but what I was getting was lots of bus errors and I was trying to diagnose that. So if we take a look at uh, the computer one schematic, uh, the first thing I did was actually looking at DTAC. Now, if you're familiar with the 68000, you'll know what DTAC is, but for those who don't, what it is, is it's a way for the uh, rest of the system to acknowledge that there is data on the bus ready for the 68000 to uh, pick up. So uh, in a typical uh, bus cycle, uh, the 68000 would latch in the address on the address lines, select the read or write pin, and then select the um, address select pin, which latches all this into the system. Um, and once that is done, um, it answers back with a DTAC, which is uh, a little pulse that comes back onto a pin to say that um, the data is ready to be read. Now, the way um, that bus errors work with this is there's normally an external timer. So uh, as soon as um, address select is uh, enabled, it sets off a timer. Well, it actually resets a timer that uh, counts up to a certain point. And if there's no DTAC um, coming back in time, um, that timer then triggers the bus error pin on the CPU. And then it, uh, it begins sort of exception processing and, and tries to deal with it. So that's where I was looking at um, initially. Um, I spent quite a bit of time looking at that. Didn't really get anywhere, to be honest. I ended up um, chasing my tail around quite a bit. So um, I couldn't really find anything at fault. Um, there's lots of little buffers in between um, the various parts because you have, um, there's effectively four parts to it, I think. That's probably safe to say. There is the section, this, this bit here, which is the section that does most of the video output from the computer card. Now that's not the main video output, that is um, a data display output. It literally only displays text. It's basically what appears on the system diagnostics console. So that is this section here that has its own DTAC coming in. Um, well, coming out, I should say. Uh, this top section here, um, this is mostly the serial ports um, that is the diagnostics console. Uh, and that, ha that generates its own DTAC and comes in and gets um, merged into one single line and it's all behind buffers and stuff. And we also have uh, the DTAC coming from computer two because that has the uh, ROM and the RAM on it with their own DTAC that get all merged into one single DTAC which comes into the actual CPU. So as I said, I spent quite a bit of time looking at all that and didn't really get anywhere. So I uh, changed tactic. Um, instead of looking at um, things like the bus error, DTAC, uh, and things like that, I switched to actually looking at the address bus. Um, I wanted to see whether there was something I could see, some kind of correlation I could make to these uh, bus errors. Um, so I went ahead and uh, connected up every single address pin to my logic analyzer, plus a few extras, just to give me some frame of reference. Now, initially, it didn't really reveal much at all, to be honest. Um, but after um, conversing with a few friends who have helped me before on this, uh, on the Quantel stuff, we did 
come to a conclusion that there could well be some RAM errors. Right, so if we switch over to um, the view from my logic analyzer, this is when I had it connected up to all of the address lines. Uh, we also have um, AS, which is uh, address select. Uh, we have read write, uh, RAM select and ROM select. These two signals are linked into the circuit that does the selection for the RAM bank and the ROM banks. Um, when these are both um, high, um, that means we're somewhere else, which means we're in memory mapped um, a peripheral, uh, something like that, like the serial port, something like that. Uh, we've got the DTAC signal, the bus error, halt and reset. Uh, you can ignore the console TX. Uh, so this is a capture of a full um, trace uh, of it starting up. So you can see here the processor comes out of reset, starts processing. We get one bus error there and then we just get bus errors. Um, now it does that, uh, what, up to 750 milliseconds and then it finally halts and, and gives up. So I was looking at this, trying to figure it out, and I was talking to um, a few friends who have been helping. And um, if I zoom in here, what we can actually see at the beginning, um, this is all completely normal startup. Um, we can see the processor accessing um, the ROM address zero um, and uh, picking up all the um, exception vectors, um, and then it starts, and then it jumps to um, Quantel's code in the in the ROM and starts executing. Now, at this point here, it's it's operating mostly uh, from ROM. You can see here there's more um, accesses into the ROM than there is into RAM. There's only just a small few bits where it actually accesses the RAM. Um, that is probably something to do with the stack. Um, it's probably writing onto the stack because the stack is in RAM, of course. Um, and then eventually it gets to here and it kind of switches. Um, so there is only a couple of ROM accesses here. Um, and there's this little section here. Now I think what is going on is it actually copies some uh, code into RAM uh, and then jumps to it uh, to begin executing it. Um, Maybe that's for speed reasons, I'm not entirely sure, uh, without correlating all the addresses to uh, disassemble code, it'd be difficult to find out. Uh, but uh, that's when we see that first bus error. Um, I'm not sure exactly what that means, but it, it kind of carries on. And you can see here it's cycling up in address space. Now I think what is happening here is clearing something. Uh, it might be clearing um, RAM, uh, zeroing it out. Um, I think there is also some accesses going on to the video display, the data display output, because there's a little 2K um, SRAM which holds the video data. So I think it clears that as well. Now it gets to this point here, uh, and that's when we start seeing these uh, bus errors coming at very, very regular intervals. We spent quite a bit of time looking at this and we've come to the conclusion that um, something happens here. Um, what it does, it actually accesses something which is not in ROM and not in RAM. Uh, you can see here that the ROM select is high and the ROM select is high. So this address here um, is trying to find something um, in uh, like a peripheral that's memory mapped, but this memory space is not used at all. So it doesn't do anything, which is why it generates a bus error. Now, uh, when that happens, it begins exception processing, um, picks up the uh, bus error vector, um, which happens to be in RAM. Um, so we think what might be happening here is there is some um, bad RAM, there's some corrupted RAM or something, uh, so when it hits that first bus error, it uh, drops into um, drops into RAM and ends up in a little loop, just going round bus error, bus error, bus error, and just keeps doing that until uh, around here something else happens. Um, I think we get a double bus error, um, at which point the, the CPU can't do anything, so it kind of gives up. So we think that might be what the problem is. Now, I at this point I swapped to my uh, computer, my spare computer two card, 
and that seemed to fix the problem. Now, I was a bit surprised by that. Yes, the reason why I was surprised by it, um, this is the one that I was using, this is the one that causes the problems. Um, this is my spare one. Now, I had tried this uh, previously, and I'd got the same same issue. So, um, I've not changed anything, um, nothing's been uh, swapped out yet, um, and it's the same on the computer card as well. This is all original, um, before it didn't work, and now it does, um, and I'm a bit puzzled by that. Um, there's a couple of things that could have caused that. Um, firstly, I removed and reseated all the chips. These have been out and plugged back in. The 68000 has been out and plugged back in. I've also been plugging and unplugging these cards out of the back plane. So I wonder whether there might have been some a bit of dirt or something and that's become freed and um, a better connection has been made. That's a possibility. Um, this... This board uh, does still fault, uh, so that I'm pretty certain there is something uh, still wrong with this. Um, I'm going to suspect one of these uh, RAM chips has possibly gone bad. Um, I've got a tester. Uh, at some point, I will um, pop those out and test them um, and hopefully get that board working so I can have a working spare. But the great news is these two cards work fine. Um, so I'm actually able to power this up. Um, there's no bus errors. There's no halting or any errors. Um, it just boots into the Quantel uh, Diagnostics console as it as it should do, which is excellent news and it's fantastic progress. Um, I don't think it had done that for um, many, many, many years. So if I actually go ahead and plug these in, connect up my serial port onto the diagnostics output. Now we can actually turn this on. We don't need the other cards in because um, this actually isn't um, trying to talk to these cards yet. It's just dropping into the diagnostics console. So we can power this on. And there we have the diagnostics console. So uh, from here, so from here, there's a little menu uh, where you can do various uh, sort of low-level stuff. Uh, it's actually very similar to the V-Series menu. Um, very, very similar kind of options. Read and write to RAM, and we can read ROM. Um, we can also jump to the ROM software. Now, that is the point where it starts to talk to the other cards, and it doesn't work from here. You get a load of error messages um, about the brush, being brush bus being hung. So I'll explain that in just a moment. But it's absolutely fantastic that we can get to this menu. Um, it's a major step forward in getting this thing running. Uh, so where do we go from here? This is the connection diagram for the paint box. Uh, this shows all of the uh, main plug-in cards. Um, it doesn't show the computer ones on here because this is the actual main paint box. Um, side of the hardware. So each of these blocks is one of the cards uh, and you can see right in the middle here we have a card called a brush processor. Uh, this is quite a key card uh, because everything else seems to hang off it. Um, it's the brush processor card which takes the commands from the computer cards and actually um, gets the rest of the hardware um, doing what it needs to do. Now, the way the computer card talks to the brush processor is there is a, a buffered connection to the 68000 data bus, and there is a 4-bit bus which connects the computer one to the brush processor, which kind of selects what kind of mode that the paint box is going to be in. As I said, that's only 4 bits. Um, it's called the CSR. The I think it stands for Card Selection Register or Command Selection Register, something like that. And it's a small little port on the, uh, the Computer 1 card uh, which connects to this. There is a status, a readback status you can get from the brush processor to ask whether it's busy or whether it's um, inactive. And uh, the brush hung error seems to me that um, it's basically saying that the brush um, is the brush processor is busy doing something, but it's probably not because it's it's only just been powered on. It's not doing anything at all. 
Um, and indeed on the brush processor card, there is actually a, um, a little LED, which is a status light, which actually tells you whether it's busy or not, and it is permanently lit. So there's obviously something not quite right going on in here. Um, I, I kind of expected there would be something wrong. I mean, it was never gonna work first time, was it? So, right, if we uh, jump to uh, the brush address card page in the service manual, you can see those, those uh, functions um, that are selected by the CSR. And we can also see here the, on the introduction, it says uh, latch is a status word that determines the overall function of the machine. So obviously it's a very, very important um, card. Um, and uh, if, if one bit of that isn't working, then the whole thing just isn't gonna work. So either the computer can't talk to the brush card uh, or the brush card is hung because of another reason. It's not getting um, signals back from the other cards um, and you've got a whole spider's web of issues. So uh, with that in mind, um, and thinking that we have all of these cards, uh, there's actually 30 of these in total. Um, each one of these has a, um, a double-sided 60-way edge connector. Um, so all of those connections have to be working. So I think what is probably going to be wise, given that um, we seem to have uh, an issue now which is off the computer cards, I think it's probably going to be wise to give these edge connectors a very good clean um, and also clean the uh, the sockets on the back plane as well because those uh, those obviously have connections in as well. So I think what I'm going to do as the next step is to uh, get all these cards, slowly go through and clean um, all of those edge connectors, uh, make sure everything makes a nice reliable contact and we'll see whether that improves anything. Uh, now, other things that have been going on, um, I've got uh, these connectors, these have just arrived. Um, these will allow me to uh, make a connection from the power supply uh, sense lines um, onto the um, sense lines that uh, Quantel originally had. So it means that the power supplies will automatically compensate for any voltage drop in the cables. So that will be an excellent addition. Uh, I've also got some metal plates like this one um, coming, which will allow me to finally finish off the power supply. Um, now there is also another issue that I've spotted with the power supply and that some of the wires are actually a bit degraded and they've turned very, very brittle. So I might end up having to replace some of the wires in there. So I think that pretty much concludes uh, this uh, update video. I'd also like to mention that I'm posting quite a lot of this stuff um, as posts on Twitter. Uh, so if you want to follow me on Twitter, um, you can get some of those sort of latest um, findings that I'm getting with this machine. Um, links to my Twitter account will be down in the video description. Thanks for watching everybody and I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.